as you are aware of, Milton and Dick have not only asked me to play the role of a moderator, but also to play the role of a discussant. And therefore, I take the privilege to make a couple of remarks to the three presentations, and afterwards, I would like to open the floor. And I do it in the sequence uh, of uh, the presentations, as we, as we heard, have heard. Then I uh, start with a, a digital currencies presentation of Ing and Ro Jing. I think uh, that uh, this uh, presentation has uh, really opened a very large scope of uh, discussion point since this presentation has somehow gone to the basic of a financial uh, system. Digital uh, currencies have been qualified as new focal point of uh, the strategic game between China and the United States. Uh, digital uh, remunerations have been considered as a strategic move. I would like to come back to this uh, basic statement um, in a minute, but since I'm relatively familiar with this topic, uh, I would also like to mention perhaps three minor uh, points because I would, of course, like to see that you are continuing to work on your paper and to publish uh, your paper. My first minor, minor remark concerns the term super sovereign, at least from a legal perspective. Uh, the use of this term is relatively risky because if I see it correctly, you uh, use this term in connection with stable uh, coins and stable coins in principle do not qualify as legal tender. So all of a sudden we would have a stable coin uh, currency called super sovereign, above sovereign uh, even, but the main characteristic of a currency namely legal uh, tender is not uh, given. Then I do have a question mark uh, as far as Liberty uh, is concerned. You call them the biggest competitor of the digital renminbi. I don't think uh, that this scenario is going to happen. At least if you look at the past, Libra has started as a very big project and it has become slimmer and slimmer and slimmer, moved from Switzerland to the United States, as you have mentioned. And uh, finally, it is a stable coin only linked to the um, U.S. Uh, dollar. Um, insofar, the threat uh, to other uh, currencies being renminbi or euro or whatever uh, other currency might not uh, anymore be so uh, substantial. And uh, perhaps a um, third uh, remark, you referred to the Silk Road, and I'm wondering whether the digital um, currency is really so important to the implementation of this project. I rather think financing, uh, crowdsourcing, and other aspects are uh, of uh, more importance. This closes now my remark. Uh, which I have said to be of minor importance, and uh, I would like to come back to my uh, introductory comment. If we uh, look at uh, digital currencies, digital renminbi, um, etc., I think we should ask the question what uh, network is likely to emerge in the future, and I think this could be an aspect that, that could be deepened uh, in the further work. Uh, uh, on uh, your uh, paper, probably, or it is likely that such a network would be decentralized. However, as far as currency is concerned, that's of course a challenge because currency should be uh, applicable uh, and uh, it should be possible to use them on a global or at least on a cross-border uh, stage and uncoordinated network uh, approaches are somehow undesirable. Then uh, CBDC network could bring policy diffusion effect, but uh, may not necessarily lead to convert in regulation. And uh, finally, uh, the regulation, of course, uh, has to deal with the power balance, uh, which uh, you have uh, mentioned in depth, which certainly could be an aspect of uh, our forthcoming uh, discussion. So all um, Overall, I think the regulatory response to the risks of digital uh, currencies uh, networks uh, is, re is really uh, crucial. It is vital to avoid a race to the bottom 
in a digital currency uh, network and it should really be avoided that uh, users are trying to uh, take advantage uh, of those digital currencies with the least regulatory um, requirements. So far, my uh, comments uh, to the first presentation, um, second uh, presentation given by um, Colin and um, Hong. I uh, found the comparison very interesting. Let me start uh, with a remark to the Chinese side. You correctly refer to the corporate uh, duopoly. And uh, if I try to build a bridge to the first uh, presentation, I would perhaps then ask the question, will this duopoly be replaced in the future by a monopoly, namely the digital um, remedy, a digital sovereign uh, currency having um, legal tender? My um, second question perhaps goes uh, more to um, uh, Colin, but it concerns both uh, presenters. If I understood um, your presentation correctly, um, you are of the opinion that mobile, mobile payment device um, is not a dramatic problem in China, uh, but uh, it could become a, a problem um, in the uh, United States, at least because the United uh, States um, is somehow slower in the implementation of a digital um, sovereign uh, uh, currency. Um, but in both countries, uh, somehow the penetration rate of mobile payments and digital currencies around maybe 70%. So don't we have a digital divide for those 30% which do not use these uh, means? And then, uh, of course, from a European perspective, is, it is um, somehow unavoidable that I ask the question about uh, privacy and uh, surveillance. You also addressed uh, this uh, uh, question. But what about anonymization if I pay cash, I remain anonymous. If I use a digital currency, traces are always um, available. Maybe the answer could be different in the United States and uh, in China, because China's uh, tradition uh, is somehow different. The widespread acceptance of an extensive and increasingly comprehensive use by the state of data can be uh, observed reaching a level that would be culturally and politically unacceptable in the United States, as I would assume at least it would hardly be acceptable in Europe, so to speak, my um, uh, home uh, space. And a fourth uh, question uh, would also relate to a uh, legal topic, private acquisition and use of data, so to speak, uh, ownership uh, of data becomes an issue um, if more data collected by the state uh, through uh, data uh, concerning payments. Could this become a problem? Do uh, data subjects more or less lose their control um, over data uh, if everything uh, is uh, collected either uh, by the state or by big enterprises such as uh, uh, Facebook and uh, other providers. And then uh, finally, the uh, third um, uh, presentation. Perhaps I could ask a similar question about a digital um, uh, divide and the question, who is uh, really in a position uh, to use the um, infrastructure? What about um, financial uh, inclusion. And uh, a second uh, question concerns an aspect which is, of course, of utmost interest uh, to me doing a lot of work uh, in uh, internet um, governance. Uh, you have expressed the opinion that as far as internet governance is concerned, China is applying a top-down paternalism approach ruled by uh, directives uh, instead of uh, rule of law, whereas the United States and uh, equally um, Europe um, would rather go for a bottom-up uh, approach, including private uh, actors uh, in a form of uh, core regulation. Does such a regime uh, really be appropriate 
for payment uh, systems, shouldn't we possibly have uh, more governmental intervention in uh, payment systems because money is, of course, a very critical issue? Um, I think I have now raised uh, enough uh, questions. And I would propose, uh, since we have slightly more than half an hour for our discussion round, that I give uh, the opportunity uh, to um, each uh, of the three presenters, if I take the two together uh, in the first and the second round, somehow to take up uh, one or two of my questions, and then I would completely open to the public. May I perhaps uh, ask uh, Ying, uh, to start because uh, you have been the pr first uh, presenter. Can you hear me? Can you speak? 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 或者是说其他的美国的央行数字货币，但从技术角度上，它一定是威胁，因为我们从我们的研究来看，这个 DIM 它采取的核心技术还是以区块链、非中心化的区块链为主的，但是数字人民币它不依赖就是单一的这种技术，然后它的一个问题就是。呃，还有一个采取一个集中化的一个管理模式，这是从技术角度或者从制度角度或者制度标准角度，它是相悖的，然后是一种零和的一个关系。然后就是一个从一个市场的角度，其实我们来看，无论是呃数字主权货币，还是就是刚才我们说的数字支付，其实我们看它们的核心的价值是在于用户，而 d e 我们看 DIM， 其实我们要看 Facebook， 它这个全球拥有三十亿，它这个用户基础。其实以后未来啊，这个主权数字货币、私人数字货币，它真正决定它的是什么？不是一个国家，也不是一个机构或者一个企业，它是市场。这市场的话，我们来看什么？尤其这种呃跨境的、全球性的一个呃金融一个基础设施。我们要看它的信用。如果当然 ，Facebook 现在有一些呃有一些信用问题，因为呃用户数字保护，但是它目前它有这种巨大的一个群体，这一定是有巨大的优势的。然而，中国现在它这个技术优势意味着什么？我是学国际关系和政治学的，然后我在我看来，它是一种标准实力、标准实力的竞争，因为它在技术上占有优势的话，那么它就有可能对呃中国想在。国际标准上扩大它的影响力，它的话语权，它就有一个制约。从这个角度来，目前就是从中国的专家和学者，确实是把目前 DIM 这个超主权数字货币作为一个比较大的威胁，这是一个第第一个问题。然后您刚才说了一个第二问题，一个监管的问题。其实现在的一个监管的问题，我觉得它的监管应该。现在因为还没有是央行数字货币，还是在试点。中国还是说明年，然后在呃冬奥会上来试点。但是接下来，呃，我也是刚才听了另外两组呃呃一个专家学者，然后去探讨这个移动支付的问题，然后有一些灵感。我觉得移动支付其实它也是有一些国家性质，但是依然我可以在德国能够用呃阿里配。呃 ，Payback 我都可以用。那就说，如果他们这些机构，就如果主权数字货币，就是我如果以后可以在德国用数字人民币的话，那么数字人民币它就要遵守本地用户它的一个监管呀，一个数字保护的一些条例。但我想，就是呃，数字人民数字货币啊，数字私人数字货币、央行数字货币，因为现在还没有这个东西，就是我们想的，那以后这绝对是一个比较核心的问题。呃，这是。我的对您的呃，对我们论文的一个一个回应，谢谢。Thank you very much.、Uh, I would like now to pass、uh, the word to Colin and or Hong. You organize yourselves. How would like to proceed?、Uh, I think I'll I'll go first.、Um, you mentioned that.、Um, Uh, with the mobile divide,、um, I suggested that it、um, would be a larger issue、um, the, because there's a lingering preference for cash.、Um, that is indeed true,、um, and certainly、um, cash payments can kind of be a hedge、um, against,、um, you know,、uh, invasiveness or surveillance.、Uh, I'm sorry,、uh, surveillance.、Um, 
So uh, certainly that, that also a certain degree of anonymity, um, but I think that uh, um, this is an issue that is best tackled um, as mobile payments take more uh, adoption in the United States um, and uh, we go increasingly cashless, we are going to have to wrestle with um, these non-bank companies as tech platforms um, that house our data and how that is now going into the regulated domain of financial uh, services. And um, we are gonna finally have to probably wrestle with um, our own privacy law here in the United States, much like GDPR in, in the EU. Um, so um, I, I think um, I think uh, this is an issue um, that will be kind of um, uh, exacerbated by this uh, this growing trend. Um, but as it stands right now, though, that it's, it's much slower than uh, adoption rates in China. Um, there's still a strong preference for cash and card here, um, and so and hence that's why um, in U.S. cities in certain states um, they are enacting laws uh, on, the, on their level to ensure that vendors accept cash um, because they are um, are worried about shutting out um, some of these um, underrepresented, uh, underserved populations. Hong, would, would you like to add a couple of words? Yeah, yeah, sure. So first of all, thank you so much, Rob, for the uh, very insightful comments. It's indeed uh, lots of questions uh, me and Colin were thinking about, and also like I was thinking about those questions all throughout the uh, uh, research. So I, I do have like a few things to add on, especially I, I really, really appreciate your thoughts on the possibility of the emergency of a new monopoly uh, to replace uh, Alipay and WeChat Pay in China, and also the question around data ownership. Um, so from my perspective, I think those questions are um, very insightful, but um, on the other hand, we need to view the possibility in the lens of the power uh, conflicts and struggles between different state agencies and uh, internet platforms in China. Um, if you look at the recent re-regulation of uh, 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 internet uh, fintech industries in China, then I think there is a possibility that state, state regulators uh, push uh, a little bit um, further than before, try to heavily regulate those newly emerged uh, fintech platforms. So uh, my suspicion is um, there is quite possible that in the future, a new arrangement of um, state private uh, um, partnership will probably emerge, but I don't know uh, exactly um, um, how that going to happen because I said it's really uh, depends on the you know um, power struggles between state agencies and internet platforms. This also relates actually with the question of data ownership. Um, um, I think like in the past a few years we saw the Chinese regulators try again and again to uh, gain the control of the massive uh, consumer data and also enterprise data uh, that have been accumulated on Alipay and WeChat Pay platforms. But on the other hand, we also saw those internet platforms have power and capacity to some extent to resistant uh, state uh, control and regulations. And also we need to view this phenomenon in a multi-layer and multi-dimensional uh, interaction way. So, so, so those platforms, they have high level executives and they have representatives in the, within the state apparatus. So it's not really state versus uh, private internet platforms, but multi-layer and multi-level of interactions between um, um, those different <laughs> different type of uh, uh, platforms and state regulators. So, uh, so I would say like the future is uncertain at this point, uh, but I, I do think Ralph, your, your comments are really insightful that there is a possibility that in the future, uh, state will more heavily regulate those uh, platforms as, as exactly what happening in the US and in the EU. So that's, I think the shared global governance uh, topic that uh, exactly fits within like today's uh, discussion of this panel. Uh, so that's my response. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for your insightful uh, comment. That let me just add before I uh, move uh, on that we of course also see a shift in regulatory paradigm in China as far as financial institutions are concerned. For example, on financial has become a, sy a systematically important, um, systemically, sorry, a systemically important bank, uh, China, uh, or the regulator has intervened against the planned public offering of its shares in late uh, 2020 and uh, 
has a, also levied a high fa fine against uh, Alibaba. So we see a couple of uh, changes uh, which have happened on the financial market regulatory field in China. And now I would like to, uh, to move uh, on and pass the word to um, uh, Xu Zhen for uh, a short comment before I open the floor. Okay, thank you, Rolf. Uh, I would like to respond to the financial inclusion I mentioned uh, by you. Um, so for I think how the uh, digital payment service uh, enhance financial inclusion, uh, this reminds me of an argument from Shen Hong's paper. <laughs> Traditionally, uh, like like many scholars have argued that for those uh, who are unbanked, we can use digital payment services like for these people. So they will have access to banking through digital payment services. But for WeChat Pay and Alipay in China, this situation uh, will probably be more complex um, because in, in, in China, if we want to use uh, WeChat Pay and uh, uh, Alipay, first of all, you need to have a bank account uh, bank card, you need to link the bank card to your digital payment account. And um, uh, as these payment services have become infrastructure uh, in Chinese societies, it actually uh, creates a new uh, financial divide. Like for those people with low digital liter literacy or with uh, or for those who have uh, uh, prefer not using these digital services, they actually uh, are excluded uh, from this new uh, digital financial system. Yeah, actually, this is an argument from Shen Hong's paper. Yeah, if you want to add more, Dr. Shen. <laughs> okay, thank you um, very much. Now my privilege has expired, and I would like to ask the whole audience uh, to raise uh, questions. Uh, you have heard really three very interesting uh, presentations, and I kind of assume. Uh, that uh, we do have many questions. Let me start with Milton. Okay, thank you. Um, I will um, I actually have three questions, but uh, I will just do two of them. They're both for uh, Ying Huang and Ru Jing Wu. Um, first of all, are there transnational network externalities in a sovereign digital currency? Clearly, there would be some uh, pressure to build up these externalities, uh, network effects domestically, but would digitization in any way improve or, or change the status of the renminbi in the global system, or would it simply leverage the level of existing of the uh, acceptance, the level of acceptance of the existing RMB. And my second question is a simpler one. You said uh, that China was excluded from international digital currency standard development. I just wanted to know how uh, they were excluded. Uh, okay, um, Ying or Ruxing, it's your turn. You have to unmute you. Okay. Um. 谢谢米勒先生，然后我，然后我觉得人民币是数字人民币不会目前看来不会帮助人民币改变呃当前的由美元所主导的全球金融和货币的一个结构，因为首先我们看到它在这个全球结构中它的一个地位还是非常。S
呃私人数字货币啊，还有主权数字货币，它都是在全球的一个金融一个结构里面运转的。所以说，它的发展一定是建立在现有的金融结构基础之上。那么，中国现在的一个呃发展数字货币，确实是它的一个机会，它作为一个机遇，因为现在它是没有办法去改变这种地位，但是它又想在主权数字货币。有更多的发言权，还有就是他想在降低美元在其呃国家呃，还有就是他的主权、他的数字还有经济体系中的一个影响力。数字美元呃，数字数字数字人民币，它被呃可以被目前被中国政府和一些专家作为一个机会，然后来呃扩大中国的一个影响。比如说是明年，就是我们又提到冬奥会，因为这个时候有很多外来外国人，然后如果用用到这个数字货币，那么它的市场就慢慢就展开，占一个先机。呃，但是至少就以后能不能改变，不会，这是我的一个想法。Rotin, would you like to add something? Yeah, uh, 就是 a q u i s t i v e in Chinese maybe. 嗯、uh, ，就是我觉得就是从中国发行数字人民币来看。就是它，我们可以其实也可以参考，就是其他一些国家为什么会就是发就是发行数字人民币。其实就是很多国家，像是肯尼亚，还有一些厄瓜多尔，他们之前也是有发展数字货币的。这些国家其实很多都是说为了去增强自己的，嗯、呃、嗯、呃，就是追求金融科技发展，然后改善现有的体系。然后有很多国家也是说，为了去抵制美国经济制裁，维护国内经济平稳这样子一些体系。然后像有些国家也是说，通过发行法定数字货币来稳定国内现有货币体系，来作为法币一个补充。所以我觉得就是说，中国就是发布这个数字人民币，就是也是会有这样子的一个目的在。就是这是我的一个想法。就是就是对，然后呃，而且就是现在就是中国有那个丝绸通过就是加强与沙特阿伯，然后这个国家其实就是在一定程度上也是说，数字人民币可以说嗯，就是说提升人民币的一个地位。对，这是我大概的一些想法。然后关于就是中国为什么就是说被排除在制定。数字货币，嗯、呃、嗯、呃，这一点我就我觉得就是黄颖可以再来，就说下他看法，他可能会更专业一些。标准，呃，他不是问你为什么，他是问你怎么样，怎么被排除之外。怎么 ？How is not why？、Oh. You asking how？ 对，呃，他如何被排除的？因为现在，呃，日本啊，央行还有欧洲的央行，还有就是一些欧洲的一些国家，瑞典啊，他们这些国家一起来探讨这个规则，但是。因为，但是中国并没有邀请中国来说参加，参加到这个一种谈判或者一种协调的一个机制里面。中国是一个人在关门来思考怎么样发展主权数字货币，怎么样去监管私人数字货币。嗯，我觉得就是这个，其实从长远角度，它是不利于中国数字人民币的全球化的。因为我我刚才我们在报告中讲到。呃，它的一个数字货币，它是跨境的，它具有全球性。我们一方面我们要保证自己的数字，或者是说就是传统的货币，它的一个独立性和安全性。但是我们同时，就像中国，它是在技术上，它在发展，它经济上允许它，它政策上也具有一些全球的维度。在这个时候，他就说，他接着下一步，就刚才柔静也非常补充非常好，就是数字丝绸之路，它一个。可以算作是一个威胁啊，就是对数字美元的一个威胁。我我是认可这个，为什么呢？我我具体的讲一下，就是这个，如果中国在跟这个呃数字丝绸之路沿线的一些国家，然后在做生意的时候，我们如果用数字人民币来支付，它更安全、更便捷，或者是说它更呃成本更低，那么我们为什么不用数字人民币呢？但本来可以用美元的，但我们现在选择用数字人民币。这样的话，我觉得会中和，或者说就是会让货币权力进行分散。这个其实是美元或者是美联储或者美国一些专家学者最大的一个担忧。我刚才提到数它这个结构性权利啊，就是我来制定标准，我来确定结构，你来参与到里面。但中国如何？他就是没有邀请中国来参加这些大家一起讨论啊，央行数字货币，呃。
，因为也是一种监管理念的不同，还有说采取的技术是不同的。嗯，大概就是这个回应。谢谢钱老师。我我可以再补充一下，就是说他是如何，就是可能中国没有包括在。这个体系内，就是首先是从探索阶段，就是中国它采用的技术，我们之前也讲了，它不是以单一区块链技术就是为基础的。其实，在区区块链推出之前，就是中国就已经就是说开始了这方面探索。然后呢，就是探索阶段，就是首先就是与可能大部分国家是不太同。然后从呃，就是开始研究数字货币和嗯、呃，这央行数字货币，然后再。二零二零年的时候，其实英格兰银行、还有与加拿大银行、日本银行、瑞典央行，还有欧洲其他央行，他们是共同一起合作探索。所以说，可以在就是，呃，央行数字货币发展初期，他们就已经说是可以达成，不管上是技术上，还是说是，嗯、呃，其他可能法律法规上，可能都已经达成了有一定的共识。所以说，就是从发展初期，可能就是线路就会有一点点不同，然后就是。再到后期，到就是可能发行或试点，就是由于各国就是法律制度更加不同，所以就是可能会导致就是说中国就是这样子被排除在外。对，这个是我补充的一个想法，就也很感谢这个问题吧。Okay, thank you very much、uh, for this insightful duet.、Uh, but let's go on. Uh, um, John, the floor is now yours. Okay. Uh. 我我想我用中文问吧，也是问这第一个 present 呃那那那,那个呃呃第一组的那个讲者，就是其实你刚才我们已经很很深入讨讨论过，就是为什么啊中国的主权货币不能就是呃在国际上取代美元？那你们也讲得很清楚。然后我的问题就是说，那个密码你们刚才也谈到，密码其实就是被中国的一些学者或者根据你们所说，就是作为一个主要竞争对手。呃，你们的 argument 就是其中一个就是两个，一个就是它的市场能力，就是如果 Facebook 它已经有几十亿的 user 的话，它通过它的呃一个 network， 它可能把它放上出去，这是市场的能力。第二个就是它的技术能力，它是一个呃呃我们讲的分散式的嘛，用那个呃呃呃呃，就是类似于区块链的一个。呃，区块链的技术，但是我问题就是说，就算它是用区块链的技术，它就算它有呃几十亿的用户，但是所有的用户他的 data 还是他的他的处的地方还是在一个 physically 处在一个国家或者一个我们叫 jurisdiction 里面，对吧？一个管辖区里面。所以其实如果国家行使它的权利的话，它是很容易把这个东西切断的。他说我不让你进入，或者我不让你使用这个呃这个这个这个密码，在你这个区在这个主权的一个。physical 的里面，那这样的话，它就断掉了，它就不不会再就是可被使用了。所以，它要如果要采取，如果比如说不单是中国或者印度或者其他的国家发展中国家，他们已经意识到就呃这个威胁对他的一些威胁的话，他就可以去去做。所以，我想问一下，那其实到最后怎么样，就是它能形成一个，因为始终它不是一个主权货币，它没有一个呃一个一个国家的呃货币作为一个 backup， 对吧？它是一个商业的行性质的一个行为，所以怎么样它能变成一个主要的威胁呢？我还是不是太清楚吧。嗯，呃，柔姐，你先说吗？你先说。我我我要不然就抛砖引玉，我就先说一点点我小小的看法，就是我我们在 presentation 眼中，就是也讲了，就是 Libra 它为什么改名成 Dim， 它就是呃，其中有个原因就是说，就是希望尽快得到美国政府的一个监管的一个批准嘛。其实就是说 ，DIM 它可能现在会更多带有一些政治化的一个色彩，就是在我观点看来，然后 DIM 也是从原来的与一篮子主权货币挂钩，像就是包括欧元在内与欧元美元挂钩，到现在就是只与美元挂钩，而且就是美联储它也表示，就是可能在之后推出的 Digital Dollar 会与就是说 DIM 展开合作，所以说就是。Libra 作为超主权货币，就是可能会通过，就是说美元这一个 channel 会来影响吧，就是有一点小的看法。对，就是，就是，就是。王颖，好，我来，我回回回应一下钱老师的这个问题。呃，确确实是这样的。我我来我来说一下，其实我们刚才说市场是一个竞争关系，技术是一个竞争关系，最深层制度是一个。
也也是一个非常重要的关系。刚才说，其实我们来看主权数字货币和私人数字货币，一个是去中心化，一个是一个中中心化一个管理，一个去中心化管理。这这里就涉及到数据管理的一个规定。我我们现在就可以说一个非常典型的例子。呃，摩拜单车 Mobike， 它其实二零一八年其实在欧洲市场发展的很好，但是就是它不符合欧洲的一个数据管理规定，然后就被 pass 掉。那如果中国现在就是虽然数字人民币它起步早一点，但是接下来我们来看它的市场如果没有市场，或者说它没有符合国际数字呃数字货币的一个标准，就是制度不符合不兼容，那中国数字人民币是没有市场的，可以借助一些数字。呃，丝绸之路上的一些国家，然后扩大影响，但它的影响是绝对是非常有限的。这当然我们说是制度竞争，其实这里面我觉得标准竞争是非常不愿意说的一个东西，就是意识形态上的竞争。然后其实我们来看，无论是数字货币，还有就刚才我们说的是呃移动支付这些东西，其实中西他们是有不同的监管理念，这也是由于他们的政治制度。还有政治一个政府的功能，还有政府和市场之间的关系所决定的。那如果是在这种背景下，呃，就是我们看，呃，中国会会被视为一个呃不是合作者，而是竞争者，而且是制度上的竞争者，而且是意识形态上的竞争者。所以说，我觉得不仅仅是技术，接下来它应该是战略层面的一个。中美的一个博弈的一个下一个焦点。谢谢钱老师。但是我我个补充的问题，那那 Libra 他扮演一个什么角色呢？就是这种，他就是你觉得他是一个政治，或者就我们讲区区域政治的一个一个工具吗？好，当时那个 Facebook 老师 ，Facebook 那个他的总裁 Zuckerberg 对吧？是 Zuckerberg， 当时他就说。呃，当时美国监管部门就是不允许这个 Libra 的项目。首先，他一直在瑞士，因为他超越了美国的监管。后来，他就从美国转到呃，从从瑞士转到美。你说中国怕什么？中国怕他，就是当时他说了一句话，他说：“你美国如果今天阻止我来做 Libra 这个项目，是谁来做？”那就是中国来做，就是说，如果就是我 Facebook 不做，中国来做，中国来做，走了先机，那美国的呃，就是在数字货币方面就会受很被动。老师，这个这个超主权数字货币啊 ，Libra 它的可怕之处也在于它的标准权利，因为它是超主权的数字货币，它有市场，有市场，有技术。那如果他他的市场和技术就是呃，他要中国，其实我他们都想要市场，就是有一种竞争关系，技术不一样，然后。我觉得这这中国现在也是比较怕 Libra 的，但是，呃，从美国角度，就比如说我可以利用 Libra， 然后对抗中国数字人民币的影响。但现在中国数字人民币还没有在没有全球的维度，所以说从今天看，我们看可能是 Libra， 以后可能是 f i t i c a l 也可能是 Digital Dollar， 这这不知道还不知道，因为为什么？其实我们就是补充一下，我们现在没有说呃数字美元，当然它是央行数据。我们现在不能说是数字美元和美国央行数字货币，它是两个不一样的东西。美国现在美联储还没有自己的数字呃主权数字货币，就说也很有很多计划，但最后它叫什么名字我们都不知道。但我们现在知道的是什么？就是 Libra 这个 Libra， 它是超主权的数字货币。中国其实呃呃，它是想。跟 Libra 就是，然后哎，我们是不是也可以有些某一程度的兼容？我们也可以共享。但是 Facebook 它，呃，这这有更多层面，就是它其实在中国是并不受待见的，所以说它也是希望就是在这个方面，然后跟中国竞争。而且我们看到美国的企业在这上面确实有很多的优势，在私人数字货币发展方面，而且中国又对私人数字货币又这么保守，中国不可能就是允许这种私人或者超主权数字货币在中国这种这种。就是对，然后我想打一个就是不太恰当的比方，就是之前就是他们就是做相机嘛，就是我忘记是反正就是是柯达相机什么的，反正就是做的很好，但是就是他这个相机这个产业逐渐落幕，其实是因为智能手机它的摄像功能就是越来越好，然后呢就是把这个相机给打败，我觉得就是就是这样子的比喻可以。用来就是来衡量，就是主权和超主权货币的一个关系，就是打败你的有时候不是你同行的，或者说同个类别的一个对手，有可能是其他行业的一个，就像餐饮行业一样，就是呃实体的餐饮业，它是可能是被外卖就是打败，就是一个
就是我觉得可以类比的一个东西，就不知道大家是一个什么样的意见。Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, I have no more question. Maybe we can invite other people.、Um, I know how difficult it is、uh, to look at the chat and、uh, at the same time to answer questions. There was a long uh, uh, remark uh, in the chat which I try now to answer. It、uh, concerns the question whether we are not going、uh, to compare、um, apples with、uh, oranges because, on the one hand, we do have payment systems established by governments or central banks. On the other hand, we do have the banking retail systems. My reply would be: indeed, things are even more complicated because、um, if we are thinking of、uh, future. Uh, digital systems and payment systems, then we have to distinguish between retail systems on the one hand and systems between the national central bank and、uh, the commercial banks. And as far as the second network is concerned, it is possible to say we have some similarities with the special drawing rights of the IMF、um, as far as retail digital、uh, payment infrastructures are concerned. We are not comparing、um, apples with oranges.、Uh, if we do a comparison with a traditional banking retail system, so my short answer to this、uh, question is now almost、uh, five o'clock or ten o'clock in the、um, state. Are there any additional questions, or should I hand back my mic to Milton? There's one question in the Q and A.、Um, you have to click on it to see it. Well.、Uh, I'm afraid again it will have to be a question uh,、um, to uh, Ying or Jing about the Bitcoin in、um, El Salvador. How does China react? Is is this a challenge? Ying, you want to say something? Ah, is I I I. Then you have to say something. Then you have to say something. I'll say. Um, actually, China for this. Um, you you say this bit Bitcoin. China for Bitcoin is for this. Like Bitcoin, Bitcoin. 啊，然后他的这个他的一直都没有改变，就是中国不承认他，呃，然后就是对他严加监管，呃，严加监管。但是呢，就是说允许他的存在，但是中国不支持，因为他非常不稳定。然后，呃，如呃最主要的原因就是中国是无法控制他的影响的，呃，就是在这种情况下，中国其实中央集权，他是希望。对这个私人数字货币，就是这种事件，基本上不会影响到这个呃，厄瓜多尔啊，他对对比特币的这个，基本上不会影响到中国对私人数字货币或者对加密货币他这种基本的态度。Okay, thank you very much.